Well, good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast of Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM from Friday, May 26th, 2023. And our top story today, pediatric dentistry alternatives for children with special needs. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Dr. Tyrone Rodriguez is with Holotes Pediatric Dentistry and Orthodontics. Dr. Ty, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Absolutely. Well, it's uh, an area not only that uh, I'm passionate about in uh, performing and delivering, but also in uh, educating folks about. Absolutely. And we're talking about pediatric dentistry and in particular, uh, maybe children who are have some disabilities or have some challenges. Uh, what's one of the biggest challenges that you face as a dentist? I mean, I'm thinking back to when I was a kid. That was a long time ago, Ty. Um, and I was really definitely scared of sitting in that chair, not knowing what to expect. How do you acclimate, just in general, how do you acclimate a young child to the importance of dentistry, but also going through some of the procedures that, uh, as a dentist, you have to perform? Uh, I think the acclimation process is a dichotomy. You have to focus on two elements. It's not just solely the patient, but it's the caregiver parent, the person that's also caring for the child, because a lot of times uh, people have either misconceptions, they've had a bad experience in the past, uh, they may have some biases and they bring that in. And studies show that children are impacted by the energy that's transmitted by the uh, adult that's near them. So if there's a high degree of anxiety, science shows that that's passed on. If there is uh, a lot of uh, mistrust and certainty that is transmitted. So the, the unique thing about working with children is you start with a clean slate. Yeah, and, and let's talk a little bit about that. And, and, and by the way, the advances in dentistry, Ty, I mean, they're, they're, I, I'm 51 years old, so they, they have come a long way. You know, we don't have those big hypodermic sized needles, the techniques, we're gonna talk about some of them in a few minutes, but there have been great strides in the dental profession in terms of treating all patients, not just children. Yes, I think dentistry now has uh, a lot more tools and better understanding in terms of how um, expectations, uh, fears, uh, needs all kind of come together and you kind of tailor fit what is uh, best for uh, the outcome. You know, a lot of times uh, age may play into it. So you may opt on certain treatments. Uh, other times it may be a, an, a condition of behavior. So you're concerned more about safety. And one of the things that I think is unique now is that we have a combination of better um, understanding with psychology, pharmacology, and also um, in very uh, limited cases, we can also resort to a hospital dentistry where care is delivered under general anesthesia. So let's talk about children with disability and, and how do you, how do you, co you know, they may be on the spectrum. I mean, there's a lot of, I don't want to paint this as, you know, this is a broad brush. But uh, how do you, how do you, you know, it's already difficult to deal with a child who's not gone through the dentistry process. How do you handle a child that may be on the spectrum or have some other developmental disability? Uh, that's a broad question. So let's kind of divvy that up. When we look at a child, we have to understand first, what are the uh, medical limitations? So I'm always uh, very keen on getting to know my patient. I want to understand uh, are there any physical limitations? Are there uh, functional limitations? In other words, are there uh, oxygenating right? Is the heart working properly? Is this patient on chronic medications? Um, I also want to understand the, the patient's ability to be aware of their surroundings. Uh, those all kind of come together and, and form a, an interesting mosaic for care. And uh, I think that the, the special needs patient, the patient with a disability, you have to kind of adapt and cater to, not just as the provider, but your office. Your office has to be a, a place where they feel that not only do you have uh, the right environment, you set the tone from the uh, onset, but that you have the, the necessary equipment, 
whether it's for diagnosis, whether it's for treatment, and that your staff is also on board because that's also an important component. Uh, it's a team effort when we have a, a, a patient come in and we wanna make sure that the caregiver, the adult is aware of what uh, we're planning to do because with some patients, it may be little steps. You know, With some patients, it may be that visit, we can get them in the dental chair. Woo, we celebrate. And with other patients, we may be able to get them in the chair and that same day we're doing treatment. So it depends on the ability to adapt the trust and uh, the issue of safety and what we're trying to do long term. Because some conditions are emergent. We're not expecting them. Somebody fell. Somebody, you know, had a bad bump. We have to treat that day. Uh, somebody has a, a swelling. We, we may have to treat that day. But then there's other patients where we find out that, okay, things look good, we can improve. And so now it's more of a kind of management and let's see how we can garner and, and, and nourish and nurture this uh, relationship for long-term positive outcomes. And, and last question before we go to a commercial break, I wanna pick up some of the treatment advances. We'll talk about cavities, uh, one of my favorite topics, we'll talk about that on the, on the back end. But I would imagine you have to do some prep work on the, for the caregiver, you know, the, the parent, maybe they have their own experiences. Now they've got a child. They don't want, as you said, parents, children feed off of their parents. They feel feed off of the energy in the office. How do you prep the caregiver uh, before that, that first visit to make sure that he, she are able to uh, have a more positive energy? Well, we have a lot of resources available to us. We have, for example, online videos that we can go ahead and show, uh, virtual tours. I like to think of it like when you're buying a house, you get to tour the house before you actually go in and uh, put, place a bid on it. So the idea that we can go ahead and see and expect uh, what and anticipate what might happen in the office is very key to creating comfort because a lot of times fear comes out of the unknown. So when we can make things more familiar, and we'll have sometimes parents where we'll say, look, if your child's very afraid of this, we want you to practice at home. So we may send the patient at home with a little tiny mouth mirror. Even though it's shiny, it's not pokey, it's round, it's smooth, we're going to count your teeth. Uh, this is the toothbrush that we use that's a little bit different. You know, it spins a little bit, so think of it like an electric toothbrush. And we like to use our little vacuum cleaners, so we'll have little straws that go in the mouth that make noises, but you're completely safe. It's just the sounds that may be different to you. And when we have a child on the spectrum, a lot of times senses are elevated. So we have children that hear more, what's called hyperacusis, or children that are very afraid of bright lights, what's called photophobia. So instead we'll dim the lights in the operatory or we'll, we'll find out what that child likes, whether it's a, a movie that is a, a particular interest or perhaps a stuffed animal. So we play into bringing more of the familiar than the unknown so that we have a positive experience. Yeah, Dr. Ty, as I said, I need to take a very quick break. We come back, we'll talk about some of the advances in dentistry, especially around cavities. I'm really interested about this. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. 
and we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Tax audits, tax liens, wage garnishments. Every day we hear stories like this about good folks who are simply struggling to pay their bills. Each of them are living a frightening IRS tax nightmare and they are afraid it will destroy their lives. I'm a divorced single mom and my ex-husband left me and the kids with a lot of unpaid bills, including unpaid taxes. I was really starting to show my stress on my kids because the IRS had sent me a letter demanding a huge payment from me. I couldn't afford it. So then the IRS was threatening to garnish my wages. I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. That would have put me over the edge financially. It truly seemed hopeless, but then a friend at work told her to call the tax relief line. The people at the tax relief line, they told me about something called innocent spouse relief. They worked it out so that all of the taxes from my ex are not my problem. I don't know how that works and, and I don't care. All I care about is that I don't owe the IRS a dime and they are not going to take my paycheck. Even if it seems hopeless, you should call the number on your screen right now. There is absolutely no cost for the call or the consultation. You are under no obligation. If you are worried that the IRS could garnish your wages, seize your assets, even take your home, call us right now. The tax relief line is here to help you. Now you have a knowledgeable, professional team of tax experts that are ready to negotiate with the IRS and fight for you to save you money. The tax relief line's professionals have successfully negotiated thousands of cases, reducing and sometimes even eliminating the tax debt for their clients. It's very easy to get started. Simply call the number on your screen right now. You don't have to live in fear anymore. The call and the consultation are free. Well, Dr. Ty, thanks so much for sticking with us this morning. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two. Yes, thank you for having me. And I got to ask you, before we get into the cavit cavitization and, and dealing with cavities, what's the most popular uh, toothpaste that uh, patients like? Is it, is it bubble gum? Is it mint? What, what, what's the go-to these days? Uh, I'd say with children, it's definitely bubble gum. Uh, children don't handle well the strong minty flavors that, that adults tend to like. Okay. Well, that, 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 I'm still, I'm still, uh, I still like the mint, but the bubble gum is pretty good. And I have very positive memories of that toothbrush and, and, uh, and, the, and toothpaste. All right, Dr. Ty, let's talk about the development in cavities because that drill, I still have flashbacks as a little boy uh, with the drill. And by the way, the dentist that I had, uh, Dr. Levin was a very kind man. His father was a kind man. His son was a kind man. But there have been some great developments in terms of treating cavities. You may not even have to drill. Yes, well, you know, Cavities have been around and keep to be uh, very uh, active. Half the world's population is affected in some degree by oral disease, whether it's a cavity or gum disease, known as periodontal disease. But in terms of cavities, because they are infections, we have to have patients understand that we don't want to just observe them. We want to go ahead and figure a way to detain them, treat them, and possibly go ahead and improve the uh, function of the patient. So when we talk about uh, patients in terms of oral care, uh, the past, pretty much the uh, original standard was gold and silver. Uh, but we've moved on from the metals and we have a variety of materials that are available to us where we can have tooth colored materials known as resins. Uh, we can have uh, materials that uh, release uh, fluoride to help protect like glass ionomers. And uh, we have a, a material that's new, but yet not new. It's uh, been around since the 60s in Japan, uh, known as silver diming fluoride. And I like to think of silver diming fluoride in terms of the richness of the history of silver. So if you go back in history and look at, uh, you know, the idea or concept of being born with a silver spoon in your mouth, uh, people used to have their own spoons and even nobility had uh, their children fed with silver spoons because silver was a natural antibacterial. We all know that silver tarnishes, but silver itself 
on the tooth will go ahead and form a protective barrier. And that's where silver diamine fluoride comes in. It's been in the US since about 2014. And when you apply it on the tooth, it darkens that area, but it forms a protective layer. So it is uh, a tool within our armamentarium where sometimes we don't even have to uh, drill. We can place it on the tooth, but I always tell parents this agent buys this time. If we don't change habits, if we don't change our hygiene in a few months, we'll go back there again because studies do show that uh, about two thirds of teeth will be helped with silver diamine fluoride, but not all of them. So it's not a panacea. And, and is that something you would ask your practitioner um, to, to try or is it something that is commonplace and the practitioner will do that just by, by procedure? So it's a, it's a matter of educating and education leads to acceptance because a lot of times parents think about why am I going to put something on my child's tooth that's going to make the tooth look dark in a certain area. And I tell parents, look, think of it like we're coating the area that has an active infection because we want it to stop from growing. And it will be a great cavity indicator because it'll let us know in the future if your child's behavior improves where we can go back clean and do a tooth colored filling and notice that nothing is there. Let's spend the rest of our time talking a little bit about prevention. And and I, I have to think, you know, look, I, I, I like the toothbrush, but how do you, you know, kids don't like to take baths. I mean, I'm, I'm painting with a broad brush here, but you know, how do you get a kid of any age, you know, maybe under 10 to think it's cool to brush your teeth? maybe floss a little bit. By the way, they've got permanent teeth coming in. They've got getting rid of their baby teeth. How do you, how do you get that prevention across? And again, it probably falls a lot to the parents and the caregiver, but how do you, how do you get them on the straight and narrow so that they're doing the right thing and they avoid the, uh, the cavitations? Okay. So this is an interesting topic you bring up because I was a science teacher for five years before I was a dentist. I've been doing dentistry for about 20 years now. And one of the things is I tell the story a little differently. I say, we know in biology, whether you're a mouse or a big whale, if you eat something, eventually you've got to do what? You've got to poop. So <laughs> patients go, well, where's he going with this? And I say, well, you've got little bugs in your mouth. We've got about over 700 just species alone of bacteria, if not thousands of different microorganisms in terms of viruses, eukaryotes, prokaryotes, etc. And so when we leave leftovers, guess what we're doing? They're eating our leftovers. So then the little gears start going off in their minds. And I say, well, what happens after you eat a whole bunch a few hours later? And then the eyes get big and you said, that's right. They've got to use the restroom. So that plaque that's building on your teeth and on your gums, that's old food that's been digested, literally bug poop. So don't you want to go ahead and get that off your teeth by brushing flossing and cleaning your tongue, it's dramatic the change that I see where parents tell me, no one's ever explained it to my child that way before. And now they're really motivated. And I tell them, look, say no to leftovers because you don't want that bug poop causing trouble. <laughs> see, and I grew up with Tuffy the Tooth and a lot of people, a lot of people in the audience probably don't even remember Tuffy the Tooth, but I, I like your story better. Ty, Dr. Ty, we're going to have to leave it there. Always great to chat with you. Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Absolutely. We'd love to be back. Thank you. And that wraps up this episode of the RNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news on lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, visit our website, and of course, all of our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN Weekly. We'll be taking a look back at the markets and giving our analysis and then taking a look at back at some of our best segments for the week. You're not going to want to miss it. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving. And don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts. 
so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.